G'day ZKD here, back with the requested update for my gun mage build. The build has gotten way stronger since the initial build guide with a large increase in both damage output and survivability, so let's get into it. If you haven't seen the original build guide, most of the core concepts of this playstyle are explained in that video, so I encourage you to check it out. This video will mostly focus on updating you on some major skill tree improvements, skill modifications and gearing improvements you can aim towards. We've now reached level 71 and the background footage will first show what it's like fighting monsters around my level in a fully juiced up expedition and then showing the build against master level 112 enemies in a fully juiced expedition. So far I've been able to comfortably handle monsters 41 levels above my character and I've no doubt we can push it way further. The first thing to mention is a major burst damage improvement I've gained from the Child of Fury tree. Furious Appetite inverts our resource system making us regenerate rage instead of wisdom. This change doesn't really change the playstyle too much as we just spend our rage by blasting packs with Havoc Orb to generate wisdom to then be able to cast our spells and teleport to the next big pack. The big reason for doing this is that the Frenzied Blows node behind Furious Appetite doubles our damage on Havoc Orb when we're above 750 rage. This is one of the main changes that saw my high end burst damage surge upwards of 200,000 per projectile or 600,000 damage per shot of Havoc Orb, not included the repeated damage applications from the stasis mechanic. With the repeats we're dealing over 1 million damage per shot for about 3 shots with Havoc Orb when fully buffed against bosses. That's a lot of burst damage. To better support this I've gotten some increased max willpower and rage on gear and from the passive tree and warlock. On the defensive side of things we picked up salvatory anchor and elevated gain in the siege breaker tree which are very powerful in the late game. These scale off our helmet and chest armor to provide some insane levels of extra defense. Pure resistance heavy armor pieces have their resistance doubled, so my 768 all resistance chest actually provides over 1500 all resistance before scaling. This along with general gearing improvements have allowed me to reach over 50% damage mitigation from resistances. The smaller elevated gain node behind it is a little bit buggy at the moment and it won't work with the same base type at the moment so for now I'm running a bruiser type helmet which gives you regen based on the max health value which is a lot of regen on a high health piece like this. If you haven't found a high resistance armor for this node yet, you'll want to try and craft one. Just find a rare or legendary heavy armor with high base all rares and use entropy orbs until you land ideally a combination of flat and percentage increased all resistance score on this item. This is a huge defensive upgrade for the build so well worth going in the late game if you're starting to push into enemies level 100 and up. A small correction from the last video is that the tenet points from Branded Burst, which you can see in the middle of the bottom UI, actually only remove one point each time you get hit. So at max stacks, they'll mitigate 20% from the next five hits. Getting a couple of dodge score items helps make the most of this powerful mechanic, and it is really quite good. Overall, I've improved the passive tree and made it a lot more efficient by rotating it and dropping the backline radar and safe from afar nodes in favor of some stronger ones I mentioned earlier. I'll link the long term plans for the build eventually at max level in the skill plan or in the description below. It has some additional long term plans for block scaling which you don't want to get early on but is a nice supplementary thing to add to the later stages of the build. And uh, I also have plans to get virtuose stance for even more damage scaling. Some small but important skill changes I've made are converting arctic spear to sacred damage to apply weakness stacks reducing enemy damage output. I've also added Echoes of Infinity to Anomaly which is insane, it causes it to pulse and pull in monsters continuously providing insane crowd control and grouping up monsters for your Havoc Orb. In a general sense for gearing and damage scaling I've found that the damage of Havoc Orb vastly outshines spell damage in the late game, so I don't bother with any added damage to spells anymore and I now focus exclusively on stacking added damage to attacks, crit damage, resource transfer rate and rage cost reductions. These all serve the purpose of making our Havoc Orb do as much damage as possible while our spells now serve a utility buff, enemy debuff and damage scaling role. In the last video I mentioned the power of the added damage to attacks from Warlock's residual energy. Well you can actually get that on gear too and it provides a huge amount of added damage as well. I now have two rings with this effect which can be obtained from untainted expeditions or by crafting with genesis stones on jewelry. You can socket a genesis stone and then either use an entropy orb or potentially one of the Erebin's tears to add that affix. There are some other affixes you can land so it might take you a couple of goes. And now my offhand isn't a hacked or exploited item, it's a Max Festen Anorak Catalyst which currently has bug dart that's scheduled to be fixed in the next patch. 
This unique is likely, however, the best in slot for this build because it has the same added damage from spells mod, like our jewelry and like that passive node. And unlike most catalysts, it does not have a penalty to resource transfer rate. Removing the penalty by using this unique and adding increased transfer rate with gems and jewelry allows for a much greater spamming of skills by letting that resource bar just slide around with reckless abandon. Other goals for gearing you should aim for include a high resistance heavy body armor, gloves and shoulders with resource cost reduction, pants and a helmet with cooldown reduction and transfer rate if possible, and high dodge score wherever possible. For the pistol, you want as much added flat damage as possible, of any type really, with crit damage if you can. For the highest possible damage on a pistol, however, you'd likely be aiming for something like flat physical damage with also flat rend or flat toxic damage, and then increased percentage material damage with attacks on this weapon, because of the way that this scales the local damage of the pistol, the added damage from the affixes, base weapon damage, and socketed material damage gems. If I had to choose an additional skill for the extra skill slot, it'd either be turret for more sustained damage, or possibly mark of impurity to debuff bosses and rares to take even more damage. I'm not yet sure which one will be better, I'll have to test it. Overall, I'm really happy with how this build has progressed. Each gearing upgrade and new major node on the tree has had a dramatic impact on its power, and I'm not even feeling like I'm close to reaching the limit of it in terms of pushing endgame deeper and deeper. Before we wrap things up, I'd also like to take a quick second to thank my sponsor AMD for their support of my channel. I received a PC from them a while back and I've been really happy with the results for streaming, making videos and gaming. If you have any questions about the build or suggestions, please feel free to post in the comments below. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.